Good morning. My name is Morgan. If I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, I'm married to Dallas, and um, we are just honored to be a part of this church. We really are. Today I'll be reading Psalm 23, and this is the basis for the series that we're entering, and I'm really excited about this series. I know a little bit behind the scenes of what's coming, and Dallas and I have both read a book based on this this psalm, and it's been life-changing for both of us. And so I'm just really excited for all that God is going to do through the upcoming series in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The scriptures are as relevant today as they were then. Amen. Thank you, Morgan. Morning. How is everybody? Good, good. I feel like I haven't been up here in a while. It feels like kind of strange to me. I just had one week off though. So last week, Ira did a phenomenal job kind of concluding our series, the Lifestyle of Biblical Characters series that we did. And he talked about encouragement. Now, one thing he talked about though, I, I've thought about all week, and it's this word blinky. How many of you before Sunday knew the word blinky? Okay, like two. And I don't know. I need to, I need to talk with them, see if they're telling the truth. <laughs> but since then, I've been completely misusing that word, blinky. You know, everybody in, I encounter, I'm like, hey, you look like you're about to turn. Don't get blinky on me. <laughs> but he did such a good job closing out that series. And now we're starting a new series called Overflow. And we really want to look at this statement from John 10.10, where it says this, it says, the, th the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So fullness of life is no matter what your background is or religion or whatever, most everybody is looking for fullness of life, and they're looking for it from some place, and that's why this is such a bold statement from Jesus to say, you know that thing that you're after? You know that thing that basically everybody is after? I've got it. That's what he's saying here. And not only do I have it, but the whole reason that I came is so that I could give it to you. So I think all of humanity would be wise to look at this statement here from Jesus and evaluate, does he have this fullness of life that we're, that, that, that we're after, right? And so not only is he saying life here. He's not just saying, you can trust me to get you to where you want to go ultimately. He's saying, you can trust me to have fullness of life now. To grow in fullness of life more and more and more. To experience the life that God has for us. So that's where we're going to focus in this series. We're going to be in Psalm 23. And most people think that David wrote this psalm. And it, it sure seems like things fit to where David wrote it, but if, if not David, it certainly was somebody who had an intimate and confident relationship with the Lord. Now, this morning we're going to focus really primarily on that very first statement. Because if you don't have this first statement, the Lord is my shepherd, you don't really get anywhere else, do you? You could never say that I lack nothing. You could never be led into the green pastures or the still waters, or you could never walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil if the Lord is not your shepherd. It's so critical for us to understand. Being able to confidently proclaim the Lord is my shepherd is where everything starts. And I would make the argument where everything ends. And everything else is a consequence of the Lord being our shepherd. Now, when we say the Lord is our shepherd, we're really saying three things. One, we're proclaiming that Christ is Lord or Yahweh, the self-existent relational God. That when you see Lord in all caps like that, that is Yahweh. 
And there was so much reverence towards this name Yahweh that people wouldn't even write that word down. So they would instead say the Lord in all caps to represent Yahweh. So what we're saying here is Yahweh, the one that we revere, the name we revere so much that we won't even write it down, that is who is guiding us. That is who our shepherd is. And then number two, we're also submitting ourselves under his lead. So we're subordinating ourselves and admitting that his way is the way that we are going to follow. But then three, it's, it's a step further than even that. We are acknowledging that we are sheep, not shepherds. Now, <laughs> that's a hard thing for us today in this culture, isn't it? We should be our own shepherds. We should be able to do our own things, right? But to say the Lord is our shepherd, what we're saying is we're admitting that we have no idea how to get to the green pastures or the still waters. And that's very important for us to admit, is it not? I mean, the world would say, here's the way to the green pastures. Here's the way to the still waters. They'd say things like self-liberation, right? Getting to know yourself and all these different things, that leads you into the contentment that you desire. But, I mean, I think we would all agree, we're not really setting any records this generation in contentment, are we? Right? I mean, peace is, is not, uh, not maybe what it was generations ago. I don't think we're saying we're crushing it. We're knocking it out of the park in terms of our contentment in our culture today, right? And yet, there's this movement that says, oh, we've got it. We've got the answer. We know the way to the green pastures, but it simply isn't true. In order to get to the green pastures, it has to be following after the shepherd who knows the way when we don't know it. It's so critical for us moving forward. It is submission to the shepherd that leads to liberation. It is denial of self, not embracing self, that leads us to the green pastures. It is acknowledging not our strengths, but our weaknesses in order to be led into peace and contentment. How many times in your life have you said, oh, I know. I know what will lead me into contentment. Let me take that route and then just see it all crash and burn. Anybody want to admit? I know for me, I'm thinking about this week, I was thinking about how all growing up, I said, you know what, if I can just play college baseball, then I'll be content and happy. And my youth minister at the time, God bless Dale Gentry. He was an amazing youth pastor. I still call him up. I'm like, hey, I got this thing going on. Tell me, you know, speak into this, right? Everybody needs a youth pastor like that or like a Matt Lorenzen, you know, like we have here. And he said to me over the years, he said, you know, I don't think you're going to find contentment that way. And here I am thinking, well, he's just saying that because he wasn't a great athlete, you know, and he just has, he just has no idea, right? So I go on thinking that this is going to be the thing. This is going to do it for me. So I go to Lipscomb University to play baseball, and the craziest thing happened. Nothing for my contentment at all. And then I remember distinctly one night we play Vanderbilt University and this was a historically great team. They were ranked number one in the nation. They had about 12 guys, I think, end up getting drafted off this team. And we beat them. We shocked the world and beat them that night. And so after the game, I go out, you know, and party for a while. Sorry, Mom and Dad. Uh, but then afterwards, I go back to my dorm room, and I just start bawling, crying. I'm like, really? This is the thing that I thought would lead me into contentment. I thought this is where the green pastures were. And I just bawled that, lot, that night knowing that that thing I set my hopes on for so long was here and it was empty. It was hollow. It never could live up to the thing that I hoped it would live up to. And maybe some of us have that same story, that time and time again, if you look back at yourself five years ago, and you said, if I could just get to this point, then things would be great in my life, right? Time and time again we do this, but the thing is, we have no idea where the green pastures are. But the shepherd does. And so we've got to focus on the shepherd. Our contentment is on the shepherd. We, go, we stay behind him. We don't wander away from him. And we just follow after the shepherd. And the consequence then will be 
that we lack nothing. Charles Spurgeon says it like this. He says, we have all things in abound. Not because I have a good store of money in the bank, not because I have skill and wit with which to win my bread, but because the Lord is my shepherd. We have everything that we need for an abundant life if the Lord is our shepherd. So, that, so now then when the consequence of that is, if the Lord is our shepherd, the consequence then is that we lack nothing. Everything will be okay for all time if the Lord is my shepherd. In uh, Matthew 6, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says it like this. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So that's crucial. Everything we need will be there if we just follow after the shepherd. The shepherd has led us to this point, and I have nothing to do with making the way, just following after the way. So all we do is just say, we're sheep, and we're going to follow after the shepherd. And by the way, the sheep never really needs to know where they're going. It's simply enough that the shepherd knows where they're going. That's so crucial for us to understand, right? Therefore, our sufficiency comes from the shepherd, and we don't have to worry about tomorrow because we're not there yet. The shepherd has led us today, and he'll lead us again tomorrow, so we don't worry about tomorrow. He'll lead because we have no lack if the Lord is our shepherd. In Philippians 4, Paul gives us a great example of a life with no lack. He says this in Philippians 4.11. He just says, I'm not saying this because I am in need. For I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. Now, if you know Paul's background, this is a pretty staggering statement. The dude's been shipwrecked at times. I mean, how can you say that you don't need anything? I mean, wouldn't you have liked a life raft when you were shipwrecked, right? And been in jail. How about a good lawyer? That would help. Or a key, baby, to get out of jail, right? I mean, there would be need there. And how about when he's been bitten by a snake? A good doctor would help? Maybe some medicine? Right? But he's saying, no, no, I got everything that I need. Why? Because a few verses later, he says in verse 19, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. See, we have an abundance of riches in Christ Jesus. We have a good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And it doesn't matter what happens. There is no scenario that can ever overtake us if the Lord is our shepherd. Everything will be okay for all time if the Lord is our shepherd. That boat can sink, and it will be okay because the Lord is my shepherd. We could wake up in a jail cell one day, and it would be okay. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. Or we could not wake up at all, and everything will be okay for all time because the Lord is my shepherd. And even for my family. If something happened to me today, everything would be okay because the Lord is my shepherd. And I don't know about you, but this has been my biggest struggle since eight years ago when we brought this little girl home, which we brought a lot of joy with us when we brought her home, but we also brought home one big fear. What if something happens to me? What will happen to my kids if something happens to me? I don't want my kids to be another statistic, right? I just, I, I just, I got to be here. And what I've realized over time is I'm putting so much pressure on myself to be their shepherd. When it was never intended to be that way. If the Lord is my shepherd and the Lord is my family's shepherd, then everything will be okay for all time. Do we believe that this morning? That everything will be okay for all time. Uh, Dr. Roland Taylor, he was a Christian martyr in the 1500s. And uh, he was martyred essentially for speaking truth to power. Sometimes power doesn't like when, <laughs> when their ways are confronted, right? And there were some things going on in the church that he was concerned about. So he boldly proclaimed those to the church. And the bishop comes up to him and says, essentially, uh, do you know who you're talking to? And he says, yeah, 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 here's, here's your position. Here's where you're from. And also, you're just a man like everybody else. And that likely sealed his fate right in that moment, right? And so he was set to be killed the next day. And he writes this to his wife and kids. It says, I say to my wife and to my children, the Lord gave you unto me, and the Lord hath taken me from you, and you from me. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. I believe that they are blessed which die in the Lord. God careth for sparrows and for the hairs of our heads. I have ever found him more faithful and favorable than is any father or husband. Trust ye therefore in him by the means of our dear Savior Christ's merits. Believe, love, fear, and obey him. Pray to him, for he hath pro promised to help. Count me not dead, for I shall certainly live and never die. I go before, and you shall follow after to our long home. Now, the next morning as he was taken to be killed, he was granted at the suggestion of the crowd one more moment with his wife. And they prayed together, and then it says this. After they had prayed, he rose up and kissed his wife and shook her by the hand and said, Farewell, my dear wife, be of good comfort, for I am quiet in my conscience. God shall stir up a father for my children. Now that's a good death right there. Trust in the sufficiency of the shepherd. God shall raise up a father for my children. God shall take care of my mother. God shall care for my spouse. God shall care for my grandkids. Everything will be okay for all time if the Lord is my shepherd. And Dr. Taylor knew that if the Lord was his shepherd and the Lord was his family shepherd, everything would be okay for all time. And so he didn't put it on himself to be his family shepherd. Now, i got to tell you guys, I have felt so burdened in my life carrying that I'm my family shepherd mentality. But you always have to worry about what happens if something happens to me in that scenario. But if we can be a people who just say, no, no, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Then over time we will find that we lack nothing. Dr. Taylor understood this. Man, praise God that I don't have to be anybody else's shepherd. You don't have to be anybody else's shepherd. And the Lord, who's overcome death itself, can be your shepherd. And if that's the case, then everything will be okay for all time, even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We don't have to fear any evil. Why? Because he is with us. And if he is with us, and he's greater than death, then we can have peace forevermore. Everything will be okay for all time, for all time. The entirety of our contentment comes through the shepherd. Not even where he leads us, but in himself for all time. I hear a lot of people, I had a guy take me out to lunch one time a couple months back, and, and he said, I got your lunch. And I said, oh, thanks, man. Why did you do that? You didn't have to do that. And he said, oh, I'm working on a slide for heaven. He's wanting, he's wanting to get, like, earn points to get, to get himself a slide into heaven. I just, I've been thinking a lot about that. I, first of all, I think it's really funny. Uh, but second of all, the thing that's good about heaven is that God dwells there. Not the things around. You know, often we think about what's, gonna, what's heaven going to be like, you know? I mean, is it going to be so cool? Is it going to be like, you know, roads paved with gold and all these different things? It's okay for our minds to go there. But really, the great thing about heaven is that we get to be with God forever. I mean, we get to be with our shepherd. Our contentment is in our shepherd. It is not in anything else. It's not even in the green pastures. It's not even in the still waters. It's in the Lord being our shepherd. The shepherd is sufficient. And, you know, there's a, some mixed, historians kind of have a mixed view of this, but a lot of people think that when we talk about green pastures here, we talk about still waters, we're not really talking about, like, rolling, green, lush hills. And we're not talking about, like, rivers and, and creeks and, you know, that sort of thing. What we're likely talking about here is patches and puddles that the shepherd would lead the sheep overnight to stay in an area that was a green patch and they'd enclose the sheep in there so that he could lie down to sleep that night to have a place to sleep and that he would lead them to puddles of water so that it could be nourished with water so the point being here is that God will provide our every need for us but our contentment our satisfaction doesn't come from the place he leads us it comes from him himself 
And I think that's so important for us to realize because we don't praise the need that's being fulfilled. We praise the one who fulfills the need. And that's where our contentment comes from. That's where fullness of life is actually experienced. Uh, John 17, 3 says this. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. You see that? Contentment is knowing the shepherd more fully. That's where abundant life is found. So go back to John 10, 10 where we started. He's come that we would have life and life to the full. And he's saying this is life forever. This is what it's about. This is everything right here. It's to know God. That's where the life without lack comes from is knowing God more deeply. And the more we know God, the more we experience life to the full. That's fullness of life right here. Knowing God more deeply is fullness of life. Um, Morgan and I have been married over 11 years. You guys saw Morgan. She did the scripture reading. And we've been married over 11 years. And, and, I, and I would say, and I mean, don't ask her after the service, but I would, I would say we've had a good marriage to this point. You know, I don't, we didn't really talk about like what she's going to say if you ask her. So maybe just avoid asking her. But I, I've just kind of always felt like we've had a good marriage. I mean, we really haven't hit, like, big rough spots, although I know in every marriage, you know, that's likely to happen, right? And, and 2016 was kind of a rough year for us. It wasn't really on our relationship. It was more just the struggles that I had personally, which I'll share a little bit more about next week. But everything's been pretty good. Now, I've always struggled at Christmas time with getting her a good Christmas gift, I've always just messed it up, I mean, majorly. And I've had, you know, you know me with Christmas. I mean, I'm thinking about Christmas now in August, and I still haven't gotten her good gifts over the years. One year, I got her a chess set, and I thought I nailed it. <laughs> Man, I thought, this is it, I got it. Turns out it was more my heart loving chess and hoping she would like it too. So I messed up that year. One year I got her a sweater, and I thought it was a nice-looking sweater, and it turns out after doing some research, it will be in about 50 years. It'll be a good, good sweater for her. So I messed that one up. But the one that takes the cake is one year for Christmas I got her a crock pot. <laughs> Guys, this was, this was years ago. I just want to preface with that. All right. And I thought it was a cool crock pot because it had like these dividers in it and stuff. So you could like cook one thing here and one thing here and one thing here. And I thought it was a really cool crock pot. But here's the problem. She didn't want a crock pot. <laughs> so, so after a few years, I kind of start to realize, man, I, I keep messing this up. Why do I keep messing this up? And God prompted me with a question that I didn't really want to ask which was, how well do you know Morgan? I mean, if you continue to mess up <laughs> over and over with these gifts, how well do you really know her, right? And so we've wrestled with that over the last few months and things, and, and right now, you know, we're in a season where I, we'll just ask each other, hey, what's on your mind? Where's your heart at right now? And sometimes that leads to arguments, <laughs> you know, as you get to know somebody more, maybe there are some things that are popping up that weren't popping up before. But ultimately, it's led us into a really good place and a really good season. And there's such a contentment for your soul when you start to really know somebody, right? There's such a, a peace there when you really start to know somebody. And I feel like we're in a season now where that's happening. I mean, there's some nights where we would rather just talk to each other than watch TV, which you know, it's a big deal for us because typically we'll turn a Columbo on or alone or something like that. But uh, now football season might jeopardize that a little bit. I don't know. We'll have to see here in a few weeks if that's still the case. But, but I'm hoping that I'll nail that Christmas gift this year because I feel like I'm knowing her more fully. Now, again, that's brought so much peace to our hearts. Imagine what knowing the creator of the universe more fully will do for your soul. Imagine if you just take steps towards knowing, God, what do you desire? What do you want? What do you like? What's your character like? What brings you joy? All these things. Imagine what that will do for your heart when you just know God 
more fully. That's where eternal life is. That's where fullness of life is found, is knowing our shepherd more and more fully. Jesus is saying, this is life. This is life for all time. Knowing God more deeply is life. How many times do we as Christians just trust God for our salvation to get us somewhere one day, and yet just kind of leave it right there, right? It's like eternal life, yes, check. But fullness of life, I don't know. I'm not sure about that, right? It's like we marry him and then we say, okay, I'll see you in eternity, right? But in John 10.10, Jesus is telling us, he's inviting us into fullness of life right now. And fullness of life comes from knowing God. It's not from the green pastures. The green pastures really are just an added bonus to an already sufficient shepherd that provides everything for us in a life without lack. He will supply everything that we need. When I was a a kid, one of my favorite things to do would be to climb up on my dad's back. And I'd say, Dad, can I get on your back? And he'd say, sure, where do you want to go? And I'd say, I don't know, just want to get on your back, (laughs) right? Now, I remember distinctly the day that I was like too cool for that, you know. And it probably came at a good time for my dad now that I think about it because I was like nine and getting pretty big, you know. So saved him from having to say, hey, Dallas, can you know you not do that anymore. Uh, but I distinctly remember that day, and, and I just remember thinking this was such a good picture into what our Heavenly Father is like. You know, he, he really does just want us to climb up on his back and let him take us where he desires for us to go and where really in our hearts we desire to go and I just hope we never feel too cool to climb up on his back I mean there's a culture today that says just be you be your own shepherd you know take it your own path all that that's fine you know that's the way to go but really for us to just acknowledge we're sheep and we need a shepherd I mean we just say yes like take me where you want to go, I don't even care where that is. I'm just so happy to be on your back. Just take me where you want me to go. And guys, we do. We have a shepherd. Whether we're wandered or wounded, will take us where he desires for us to go. Now, if, you, if you're here this morning, you know, if you're sort of wandered away from the shepherd, I want you to know that there is no height or depth he won't go to in order to bring you back with him. You should know the love of a shepherd that says, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go track them down. I'm going to go track them down. You should know that this morning. And if you're wounded, you should know that the shepherd is not going to leave you behind. That if you can't follow after him, he will in fact pick you up and throw you over his shoulders and make sure you get where you need to go. Everything will be okay for all time as long as we just follow after the shepherd. We don't get to the life with no lack without the Lord being our shepherd. We follow after him. And you know, maybe some of you here are, are tired today, man. You know, you're just tired of going your own way. You continue to go this way when the shepherd's going this way, and, and you're just tired. I mean, maybe, maybe you've just blown it. Maybe you've messed it up time and time again. And here today, you're wanting to say, yes, Lord, Yahweh, I submit. Your way is the best way, and I don't even need to know where we're going. I just want to climb up on your back and let you just take me wherever that is. And that's where peace will ultimately be found. Guys, we have a shepherd that fiercely, fiercely loves us. And he's made a way for us to be with him forever. And he knew, by the way, he knew what he was buying when he went to the cross. He knows exactly who you are right now. He knows who you will be five years from now, ten years from now. And he still said yes because he wanted to make a way to be with you forever. That's the shepherd that we have. And the enemy wants to to lie and steal and kill and destroy and distort this reality. To say, no, 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 you've, you've, you've done it before, you can't go back again. But while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were a long way off, the Father comes running. And that's just the shepherd that we have. So here this morning, if you've wandered, if you're wounded, man, just come in his presence and just say, yes, Lord. Yes, my great shepherd, I just follow after you, and I know that's where my peace will ultimately 
be found. The altars are open if you need. Let's pray and then we'll worship. Father, we're just so thankful for your love. We're so thankful that you are a great shepherd, that we can just follow after you. And if we're wounded here today, we can climb up on your back and and everything will be okay for all time because we don't even need to know where you're taking us. We just know that we're with you and that you're with us. And though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we won't fear evil. Why? Because you are with us. And so we thank you so much for that reality here this morning. Father, help us to be a church that embraces that reality more fully, more deeply. Help us to be a church that says, you know, I'm not going to be my own shepherd. In fact, I'm not even a shepherd. I am a sheep. Sheep wander. They don't know the way to the green pastures or to the still waters. They just don't know it. And so help me to understand that I don't know the way. I just need to follow after the shepherd. And that's where the sufficiency is anyway, is with the shepherd, not the destination. Father, help us impart that truth into us. Help us to know you more deeply like John 17, that that we would just know you and be invited into this fullness of life that you offer so graciously to us. And Father, one more thing I ask. Just make us a people of praise of your name. I mean, we're going to praise something. It might as well be the name above all names. So make us a people of praise. And Father, I pray that, you know, you say in the book of Acts that like they met together and and the ground shook where they were. And I mean, I just pray that you'll make us a a church that just believes that reality that that you can do earth shattering things in our community, in our hearts, in our family, that that it doesn't have to end where we are right now, that you can take us and you can lead us, and that we truly lack nothing if we're in your presence for all time, for all time. We love you very much. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. Thank you.